Grant Williams, the starter, is there an offensive issue? We'll talk about that. Plus, we'll dip into the mailbag. Lots of Sam Hauser talk. Sam Hauser, the difference maker. Sam Hauser, the closer. It's all right now on the Locked On Celtics podcast. Be ever ready. Recognize the city of champs. Boston, baby, we do what you can. Locked on number 18, Tatum and Brown, J team. Step back, we gon' wet that and slay teams. Of course, the Celtics, who else could it be? Screaming like KG with the Larry OB. Corral is above average, assessing the team status. Best daily pod, no cap, salary matching. Clutch like Bird to DJ, keep John on replay. Primetime, dapping up the truth on the sideline. Rain and Jays, how it started, raising banners, how we finish. Locked on Celtics pod, home of the winners. B. Hey there, welcome back to the Lockdown Celtics Podcast. Thank you so much, so, so much, for listening here on the Lockdown Podcast Network, where it's your team every day. I'm here for you every day with a free, fresh podcast that exists wherever you get your podcasts and on YouTube. So subscribe if you're new, wherever you want to subscribe. Uh, I do uh, appreciate you making this your first listen every day. I'm John Corrales, former professional basketball player. Now I cover the Celtics for Boston Sports Journal, and I've written a book called The Boston Celtics All-Time All-Stars. Leftover thoughts here from the game that I didn't talk about in the post game. And then a couple of mailbag questions in the second and third segments to uh, wrap up the week. Although I'll do, I'll do post game podcasts uh, over the weekend too. I'll I'll drop some, some shorter post game, quick thought type podcasts uh, because why not? Let's have some fun with it. Bet online brings you today's episode. Bet online has you covered this season with more props, odds and lines than ever before. Bet online is where the game starts, and this podcast starts by bringing in Tom underscore NBA, known to most as Tom Westerholm. Tom, how are you doing today? <coughs> I'm still battling through. <laughs> I'm still battling. I mean, it's it's two slew games in a row. I mean, I appreciate I appreciate you getting it out. I appreciate you getting it out. You know, uh, before anybody accuses Corrales of being a uh, taskmaster or anything here, uh, he gave me many opportunities to dip, but I am, I'm here. I'm, I'm, I'm <laughs> podcasting. That's these, these brave. takes on Celtics. Yeah. I'm, I've often referred to myself as very brave. Uh, yes. These takes on Celtics versus Pistons have to be shared with the people. So I mean, it's, I it's a necessity. It's, uh, <laughs> I would not be doing my pay. Uh, this is more patriotic than me voting on Tuesday, frankly. I, I've often said that. I've often yeah. said that. Yeah. I, I so need I'm... stickers that said I podcasted after every time I make an appearance. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, <laughs> I podcasted. Can you imagine? If we just put out stickers. <laughs> I podcasted <laughs> with all the microphone today. Like, yay. All right. Good for you. <laughs> um, all right. Let's uh, get to this game here. Uh, any any thoughts stick out to you? Uh, I talked yesterday about Tatum going off in the second half and Jalen and Sam Hauser. Those those have been discussed. We'll get a little bit more into that stuff when we get into some of the mailbag stuff. But uh, what what else there has stood out to you? Well, I thought one of the more notable uh, things from that game to me was it was interesting. Grant, so Grant Williams started again, right? And once again, he did not have like a big offensive game. He was two for four. So at least he, at least he, you know, got got a couple shots up. Uh, you know, knocked the dust off a little bit. Um, but I thought the interesting thing to me was was how um, strenuously Joe Missoula after the game kind of like defended how Grant played. You know, and he said like, "No, listen, like Grant's defensive versatility and and the ability to guard all these people." Um, was really important. You know, he said, I, I think a reporter asked him, you know, sort of like about Grant having tough games. And Missoula was like, I would not call these tough games. Like, yeah, the thing that, that reporter, Grant- by the way, was me. I was the one. <laughs> I only yeah. saw the transcripts. <laughs> yeah. A um, reporter who so asked some, him about Grant's tough games some was dummy asked yeah. him about Grant's tough games. John Corrales, <laughs> Boston Sports Journal. Why has Grant Williams <laughs> sucked recently? He's like, uh, I wouldn't say sucked. That's yeah. That's not the exact transcript, but yeah, but that's the, uh, that's the, uh, the gist of it. And, uh, yeah, I just thought that was interesting. The Missoula, you know, obviously, look, the Celtics don't need as much offensively from Grant when he's in the starting lineup, when he's playing all those minutes with Tatum and with Jalen, and and that's fine. Um, So what they need from him is to be a super solid, you know, two-way player who who can guard a bunch of different positions. And, you know, we've seen him play pretty well in stretches against John Morant. We've seen him play very well in stretches against Cade Cunningham. And uh, I think it was Al Horford after the game who pointed out, and now on Friday, 
he's going to guard Nikola Jokic at times. Yeah. So, I mean, it's just it, really impressive stuff from Grant defensively. And I, I did think it was kind of notable as the Celtics kind of experiment with things, how kind of hard Joe Missoula went for him um, in, in that uh, in that one answer to that dumb, dumb question. I mean, just a just a real just stinker of a question, but uh, <laughs> but the question was so bad that I followed it up, and and uh, because in part of his answer he said, you know, he can't be he can't be timid with his shot, yeah. yep, and so he did vehemently defend Grant while also throwing out a, a, a little bit of a critique and the critique is where I was going with it because I, I do think that there is a little bit of playing passive out there with Grant offensively. And I mean, obviously on a personal level, I, I don't know what he's trying to accomplish. Um, Missoula said, Hey, he puts his teammates first. Uh, which again, big, nice, big defense. And, and he does, I grant is a very good player. We've established that on this podcast, but at the same time, he has developed into a type of player that they, they can't have that guy go away when he's with the starters. Yes. You're playing more with Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown and Marcus smart is out there. And Al Horford is out there. Okay, fine. However, you're grant Williams and you have added to your bag. And right. it's okay to shoot some of these shots that they want you to shoot. Don't fall out of rhythm. Don't, don't lose your confidence. Go out there and short. Sure, what, what we don't want to see is the extreme end of his offense when he's with the second unit, which is I'm going to attack a closeout and I'm going to Euro step and I'm going to try this kind of fancy move that's fine when you're with the second unit. And if you want to dial it back a little bit, sure. Still attack the closeout, but now be aware that the guys that are out there on the perimeter are Tatum and Brown and right. these other guys. It's just a little bit more situational awareness. Still shoot your shot. Still shoot that three, bro. You're, you're, you're out there shooting like 50% from three. Why are you not going to take that? They need you to hit that shot. Take it. And when they close out on you, be the guy that collapses the defense because the worst thing for the other team is, oh, my God, we're overreacting to Grant Williams' paint touches, and he's driving and kicking to Jason Tatum. We're screwed. you got right, to right. have that element in, the, in that game. Yes, good for you for defending Ja. Good for you for defending Cade. And good for you for going out there and defending Jokic, however well you're going to defend Jokic. He's good at that stuff, but don't, don't sit there and be like, well, I'm a fifth option now. So I'm going to, I'm going to be passive on offense. Don't do that. Right. Because I mean, frankly, one of the things that makes Tatum and Jalen so dangerous is the fact that they're surrounded by so many other options. So yeah, I mean, and look, I think we're two games in to the starting grant experiment, right? We had, and the first one again, four times as many shots Corrales as, as in that first game. I mean, uh, you know, uh, significantly more aggressive or maybe infinity more since he didn't shoot any. I don't know how right. that. Right. Um, <laughs> yeah. So, so infinitely more shots in, in this, uh, in this Pistons game. So, I mean, I'm sure it's going to be a little bit of a process for him. He hasn't yeah. been a starter very much in the NBA. Um, I don't even, I, 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 I haven't looked at basketball reference. I, I can't imagine the, uh, the number of starts is high. So, um, but you know, like that's the, uh, like it, it is a learning process. He did get used to being an offensive option on that second unit. You know, he, um, and, and, you know, Malcolm Brog, he got used to playing with Malcolm Brogdon who, um, has, has done a really nice job. Now he's got to get used to playing with Marcus smart and a, another, another guy who dishes out a lot of assists, especially over the last three games, but you know, a different type of player than Brogdon is. So, um, you know, I, I think, uh, it, it's definitely going to be a learning process for him. And, and we're starting to see kind of the, uh, the, the early elements of that, but, all in all, I, I mean, I do agree with you. Like, it's the Celtics are just so much more dangerous when everybody gets involved. We've seen it a lot this season. The way that when the ball whips around, I mean, when when there's like three or four passes, the Celtics are getting a layup or an open three every single time. Like, it's just, you know, it's it's just it's, it's just uh, good stuff when the ball moves and when everybody's ready to shoot because defense is kind yeah. of overreact there. So, yeah, I 
no, no real disagreements. Uh, I just think uh, Grant is is getting used to it. Yeah, yeah. I just, I, I just think he's such a good, he's such a good offensive option now. He's just that's what he's grown into. So now, two hundred and nineteen games played in the regular season, thirty seven starts. That's the, uh, that's the total. Okay. And then, that's that's playoff, more. That's more than I thought. Uh, I don't see playoff games started. They changed. They changed their. Um, they change how they, they list on basketball reference, how they list the playoffs now. And I, I don't like it. They just, they list it by playoff series and I don't. It's, oh yeah. It's really annoying. Anyway. Yeah. No one cares about that. No one cares about <laughs> how basketball reference.com is, is now laid out. Uh, before I, I, I take, take us into the next segment, just quickly shout out to Al Horford, by the way, Six of six in this game, in this last game, six of seven in the prior game, four and f- four of four overall in those two games. Uh, the shot is falling uh, pretty nicely. And in fact, before that, the Chicago game, four of eight, it's a nice performance, even though he was one of five from three. So the last two games, especially, just everything is falling for Al Horford. So just no, fr- no further analysis, just, hey, nice to see those shots falling. He's a good player. It's fun to see him continue to be a good player at his deeply advanced age. <laughs> hmm. <I'm gonna laughs> just move on from that. Let's get into mailbag questions when we come back, uh, including questions involving some of the things that we just talked about. First, we got to talk about Bet Online. Today's episode is brought to you by Bet Online, your number one source for all your sports betting information, your stats, your news, your analysis. It's all right there at betonline.net. Get the latest odds and trends for every professional amateur league out there football, basketball, soccer, esports, everything. Everything you want is at betonline.net. Do you like podcasts? Person who is listening to a podcast? You can also find those at Bet Online as well fastest and easiest way to get your betting fix head on over to betonline.net you can use your mobile device to get there to learn more much much more bet online is where the game starts please gamble responsibly thanks for making locked on celtics your first listen every day now when you're done you can head on over to locked on sports today that has all the games that matter all the biggest stories in sports everything you want local experts unlike anything you're going to find anywhere else Get your big sports fix in about 20 minutes. Find it wherever you found this podcast. Uh, Tom, let's uh, let's dip into the mailbag. Let's do it. And let's let's do it. Let's do it. Uh, if I can appropriately call up one of these questions. Hey, all right. Uh, this comes from Joe. First, do you think Smart's distributing? If if Smart's distributing continues and his three point shooting improves to league average, that he should or could get some all star consideration. <gasps> Hmm. Tom, do you think that let me let me get back to basketball reference? Yeah, we're both we're both my, scrambling for a basketball yeah. reference here, real quick. <laughs> yeah, one of my one of my fifty tabs that are open, I which I yep. completely lost. Um, my my gut reaction is no. Yeah, my gut reaction is is no that Marcus Smart cannot make it to an All Star game, even though now now if he continues to have the uh. 11 assists a night if he if he suddenly is on a roll where the 11 assists are are, are I just don't know that he's going to make it I just don't think he's going to make it in the backcourt this isn't a point guard position like, like you can't sit there and be like compare him to other point guards this is backcourt front court so right. there there are just too many guys that are going to get get in ahead of him I, I don't even know like Five and a half three pointers a game. League average gets you to what thirty five percent or so. 30, 30, yeah, but it's about it's just about thirty five. So you've got to be hitting. He's got to be hitting another one. Another that basically works out to be another one three pointer per game. Yeah, yeah. You know that I doesn't mean, do it. League average but, adding a one three pointer a game, even even if it's right. Even if you say two six points a game. I, I, well, and, and like by Joe's parameters, I mean, maybe, right? Because like you say, like, okay, if Smart starts hitting league average from three, you know, whatever that average is out to, I mean, if he keeps up these assist totals, sure. But it's worth probably remembering that Smart, I mean, this was the first time in his career that he's had three straight double-digit assist games. Uh, I believe that was Jared Weiss who tweeted that out. Um, for, first time in 
his whole his whole career that he's had three consecutive ten or more assist games. Mm. And uh, yeah, that's you, that's nice. It, it's nice, but it's just it's it's not what you're you know, that just kind of speaks to how you're not expecting that to kind of continue. There's not like a long history of him having these double digit assist games. And I mean, when you look at his his three point percentage, I mean, it's twenty six point seven right now. Yeah, <laughs> like there's there's a, a long way to go on both ends. I mean, look, like I I, I you know I think you and I. Uh, Smart haters would certainly count us as enemies, but I don't think I, uh, I, I see him <laughs> as a, uh, I certainly don't see him as an all-star candidate. Here. No. Now let's, let's flip this question a little bit and say the Celtics get three all-stars because if smart, if smart, oh, this one's just easy. for the sake of argument, it, if, if smart does get an all-star nod, it's because right. Jalen and Jason have already made it and you're looking for a third Celtic. So if the Celtics do get three All-Stars, who would the third one be? Sam Hauser, obviously. I mean, <laughs> isn't that the obvious question and the obvious answer? Yeah. Sam, no, it's Malcolm Brogdon, right? I mean, it's probably Malcolm Brogdon. Um, but I will say, you keep giving Sam Hauser, uh, you know, 20 plus minutes per game. Uh, the man is averaging. I, I, I tweeted this out. He's, he's played three games so far this season where he's averaged, uh, where, where he's, He's played 20 uh, minutes or more, and in e he's averaging 17 points in the in those three games. The, the man, the man is racking up points when he gets his opportunities. But no, I think Brogdon is is the easy answer. But I think the Celtics are an easy one for All Star this year. Like they're not going to get three. It's just going to be the two. Like it's going to be a nod to how great their two stars actually are. It's just you know yeah. Jason Tatum, Jalen Brown. There you guys go you know, shout out to those two guys who are great. And, you know, if you're the number two team in the East, number three team in the East, whatever those, I, I think those will be the, the two guys who get in. Yeah. I think that's, that's pretty, pretty safe bet there. Uh, also from Joe, uh, you think the reason for the lineup change in the Grizzlies game is because Rob's return is going to happen on the shorter end of his recovery timeline and they're preparing the bench for Derek white. When that happens, um, I don't think that they're looking that far ahead. I think that, Memphis just presented an opportunity to to use that Grant Williams matchup because you could switch and still get some perimeter defense and try to keep them off the boards. And the same thing, the matchup I think just worked with Detroit. But yeah, I mean, but but also maybe there maybe there is something to it. Maybe there is a little something to the fact that hey, some of these matchups here. Um, this is the case and, and maybe Denver is going to be the same type of matchup. Maybe, maybe he will start or, or who knows? And, and the, the, I'll call it impending return. I'll, it's, it's at this point we're crossing into impending. It's we're coming. This is like uh seven weeks now, right? We're coming up on seven weeks. Yeah. Right about. I forget the exact day, but yeah. So well, I, think it's, I think it's today. I think it's it, when people are listening to this. I think it was the Friday. Yeah. The Friday, like, right? Seven weeks. Yeah. That's okay. That's right. So if we're at seven weeks yeah. and the initial timeline is eight to 12 and he's out there dunking and he said, they gave me the big window just, you know, in case I had a setback, all of this stuff, like, I, I feel like this is pointing to an, an impending Rob return and, I, I'm I'm answering this question as no, but I'm not putting it. I'm not saying it's out of the question that getting Derek White more used to some bench reps now gets him just just gets him more up to speed when Rob comes in. If that if they told me that that was the case, I I, I would say that that's a smart move, and and maybe I w I shouldn't be so shocked. And and even though I don't think that's the answer, I'm I'm not ruling it out. No, yeah, I mean that makes sense. I, I I think to me, if I were to guess, um, I would, I, my my guess would be that Joe Bazzula is trying to win basketball games right now. You know, like like he's trying to build like 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 a nice little like cushion here for the Celtics at the start of the season, so they're not trying to battle back like they did last year. Like I, I don't necessarily know that he's playing like five dimensional chess with with you know where guys are at, but I that said, so so my answer is very much like yours. Like if I were to guess, I would say no. But I don't think it's out of the question. I don't think it's ridiculous. And I mean, I think especially when you look at the way Derek White has been playing with the starting lineup, just wanting to kind of 
capture that lightning in a bottle because he's been really good wanting to kind of give him a chance to hey like all this good stuff you're doing you're gonna have to do it off the bench here pretty soon so like yeah. let's let's start let's start trying that i think it's i think it's reasonable to wonder about for sure uh to me i, I kind of think missoula is just trying to win games but i could see it yeah i mean I, I think he is trying to win games but also i think he gets the bigger picture so yeah, I, I, I do think there's something there. Uh, along those lines, Philip asks, with the twist in the Nets Ime news, do you think it's time to officially fire Ime and make Joe our coach? I think Joe may not be perfect, but given the rollout, best seems to support Joe with the contract so the whole team can move on and compete. I, I mean, I understand completely where this is coming from, and... Hey, the Nets, the Nets had n no reason to make Jacques Vaughn their full-time coach other than to support him. Right. Um, they I, – I, I think the Celtics can – I, Can I call a quick timeout on, on that? It was very funny last night. No, we're talking about J Joe Mazzula. No timeouts allowed. Anyway, as I was saying. <laughs> hey, ba -da -bow. Um, Boom. Yes, sir. <laughs> like – um, Jalen last night, uh, was asked about, uh, was asked about like, you know, the, the email situation and everything. And he was like, Jake Vaughn, is it Jack Vaughn? And somebody said yeah. Jock Vaughn. And he's like, Jock Vaughn. I'm sure he's going to have a lot of success. <laughs> it's like, well, what a vote of confidence from you, Jalen. That's, that's so unintentionally disrespectful. The man <laughs> so played in the funny. league, man. He's, he's, he's been in the league. league. Like he's been around. <laughs> yeah. He, like how, I mean, come on. Jake Vaughn. Uh, is it Jack? Jake Vaughn. I, that that's uh that's almost <laughs> like uh Phil Jackson saying Leon Pow during the 2008 <laughs> finals. Uh yeah. So um I I don't know what the Celtics motivation is here. They may simply uh first of all I I think there there has to be some element of we don't want to pay Ime. And we want to inflict, inflict, that's not the right word. We want to hand out some level of punishment. And by naming Joe, the official head coach, that means you have to officially fire Ime, which means you have to officially pay him. And I don't know that he's in a position right now to negotiate any sort of payout. I don't know what the situation is. Other than I, I just don't think he's getting paid. I think he's getting yeah. suspended without pay or suspended with minimal pay. I don't know. That's what that's what Wick seemed to suggest in his press conference. Yeah, he suggested that. Right. He he didn't say anything specific, but he said there's a significant financial penalty that comes with this, and they want to they want to make this the uh, 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 an actual punishment where he is he's not just sitting at home. He's not just waiting for a job. He's not getting paid however many millions of dollars to just sit in some apartment in New York and, and kind of scout other teams that he's going to try to coach. So I, I think that is a big element from this. Does that put Joe Missoula in a bad position? Yeah, it does admittedly, but he can only do what, what he's given with. And he, honestly, if you look at it objectively, you can say, what difference does it make? At this point, if you're committed to him being the head coach or if he understands this is a bit of an audition and as long as the Celtics keep on winning, everybody knows how this is going to go. Just don't screw it up. Just go out there, coach the best you can. You've got great players. Can you connect with your players? Can you run some decent sets? I think a lot of people can agree his offense is really, really good. And let's hope that when Rob comes back, the defense gets really, really good too. And then everything can feel comfortable. The Celtics can play their their legal cards, and uh, Joe can uh, eventually get the the title and hire his own staff and and all of that stuff, and, and act like a real head coach. Until then, I think because of the nature of the Eme situation, it's going to remain that until he's officially gone. Yeah, I agree. I mean, we've talked about this before. Job interviews are not comfortable job you know like these like these tryouts they're not comfortable they're right they are they are hard to get through nobody ever is like man i just i just had a lot of fun in that interview you know i just it was it was so much fun like missoula has got you know he's got his work cut out for him but that's that's part of it right this is an audition for him and i mean the celtics like 
I mean, yeah, it, it's it's not a it's not a perfect situation, and I'm sure you know there's. I wouldn't be surprised if there comes a point during the season where if the Celtics are rolling and they're, you know, especially if their defense ticks up a little bit and his offense just kind of stays the way it is. I wouldn't be surprised if we, if we hit a point where the Celtics say, all right, enough's enough. We trust you. We like you. Your players trust you. Your players like you. Sure. Let's, let's make this official. Let's take all the question marks out of it. But I mean, for now, like you said, I, I think a lot of this stuff doesn't have anything to do with the product on the court. I think a lot yeah. of it is just, you know, um, various financial concerns and legal concerns and what, what have you that the Celtics don't want to deal with. And I mean, look, that's probably one of the reasons why they were pretty happy when the Nets came calling. One of the reasons why they weren't like, well, give us a pick. It was like, no, like you want to get rid of this problem yeah. for us? Yep. Be my absolute guest. Um, <laughs> so, Yeah. I mean, hey, look, like maybe maybe the Sixers will uh, will do the same thing here in the near future. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's true. Um, and and they they clearly don't care about some of the same things that the, the Nets care about. So who knows? And you know, it's it's it is kind of funny. Just side note that the two teams that he was the assistant coach of prior to joining Boston are the two teams most likely to have hired him away yeah. from Boston. <laughs> Uh, and and in reverse order too, Brooklyn first. Like okay, you're out. You know the the Sixers just look like hot garbage right now. Uh, maybe maybe, and and honestly, all the off court stuff aside, Ime's the type of coach they kind of need yeah. in Philly. He's oh, like yeah. the, he's the the hard ass that can go in there and be like, you know what? I don't care if you're James Harden. I don't care if you're Joel Embiid. You know what? Here's how we're doing things. And you guys can cry about it, but okay, you cry and continue to lose. And when you're ready to stop crying, we can start winning. They like they they kind of need, you know, again, I, I always feel like a little weird talking about this because the off the court stuff, it's not unserious stuff. No. And but I also understand like he I know he's gonna get another job. He is gonna get another chance. And Philly, you know, Daryl Morey can go to him and say, Okay, here's your contract. Here's your morals clause. It's a little more extensive than your typical morals clause. So just read that over. Give it a real close look before you sign this thing. Like that can be how it goes. But if like he didn't he didn't commit any crimes. He didn't he did things that were I, I don't even know exactly what he did. Yeah. He he did things that were enough to violate team laws and and there's like certainly moral things and whatever that are rumored to have happened. And, and that is certainly serious stuff that he should be punished for. But at some point I know how this goes. He's going to come back and coach and on the court, the on the court stuff is, is on the court stuff. And and so we'll, we'll see what happens with that. Yep. Let, let's get a couple more questions here. Dustin says, I wonder what your thoughts are on Scal's take during the Memphis game about teams over-targeting Hauser and getting themselves out of rhythm. Does this help Sam stay on the floor and get valuable minutes improving his defense in real game situations? So for people who haven't heard Scal's take, and I think he repeated it um, in this last game as well, it's that teams are so going out of their way to find Sam Hauser, the defender, and attack him that it's taking them out of their offense and taking them out of what they normally do. That by having him out there, they see him as such a weak link that that's where they go. And it's getting them out of their their just normal rhythm, uh, their normal cadence of the offense. And that is actually a plus for Hauser because he's able to hold his own in that situation and that further discombobulates the other team. I think that's a little overstated. But I can certainly see it's just like we've talked, Tom, with these teams, uh, with the Celtics. Matchup hunting is fine until you overdo it. And there is a little overdoing it when you're matchup hunting and trying to get Sam Hauser. Um, I don't think it's it's entirely overly disruptive, but I do think that on certain possessions it, it does hurt teams. I do too. And and I think the other thing to, to remember is like, if you match up hunt Sam Hauser and let's say, you know, let's say you, you get, um, you know, you, you get Jaden Ivy on him and Jaden Ivy gets by him and, and gets to the hoop and either scores himself or, you know, dishes to the guy who helps because he got by Sam Hauser. 
Sam Hauser is, I just looked it up. He is shooting 10 three pointers per 36 minutes, um, which means he's making uh, five, uh, just under 5.5 three pointers per 36 minutes, which means that when Sam Hauser is on the floor, if you're attacking him, even if you get a couple twos out of it, he's probably making it up on the other end. Like yeah. I just, I, I, I understand like that there is a, a benefit to attacking those guys. I mean, look, how many times have we seen the Celtics do that to teams over the years? We like you said, we we saw that um, you know as far back as 2018 when they did it to the Sixers. We've seen them do it to the Heat countless times. All those guys, you know, the, the, like matchup targeting works. It's 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 a thing. You can do it. You can especially do it to get yourself in rhythm a little bit. I think that's one thing Tatum likes to do sometimes is just like you know pick on a guy and then um, okay I got a layup now I'm feeling good now I can make whatever else. But I mean realistically like. I think the, the the net positive of of having Hauser out there, like, it, like I, I do, I, I think I do think Scal's right. Like, honestly, I I think that there is a very limited shelf life and uh, kind of a limited utility in in completely dismantling your offense just to chase one guy who's like, yeah, he's like a like a like a C minus defender, right? He's not good, but he's not like, you know, he's he's not the single worst defender I've ever seen. He's still big. He still kind of competes a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, so, I mean, I think if there is a benefit, for some reason, people seem to look comfortable <laughs> attacking him. Um, like, even when he gets a good contest, sometimes it feels like guys like are comfortable enough to get in rhythm. So, I mean, there's sure. something there. He, he's not He's not like an elite defender. He's not a good defender. But um, he sure is elite at the other thing, which is one point more. So, uh, <laughs> I, I, yeah, I, I don't think that the... Uh, I don't think that the net positive is is particularly high there. Yeah, I mean, I agree. It, it, and I, it, like I said, targeting him is 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 fine. And if teams want to target him, by all means, that targeting him on defense should not be the 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 thing that gets him off the floor. And right. and and the next the next element to this question and this answer goes back to Rob is coming back and. Right. Okay, you want to attack him? Well, now, now it's it's the, oh, you want to pick on this kid at school? No problem, you've been picking on this kid at school. Now his much older brother and much bigger brother is is walking him to school. Still want to pick on him? Or you're good? You know, like, you know how that's going to go if you try. So um, it was, it, yeah, it's, it's, I think it's going to change a little bit. And that that's going to help. And like you said, he's, he's a big dude. He's not, he's, right. he can get beat, but Hey, every once in a while, he's still going to get a contest. Um, and he still, he still competes out there and, and working hard on the defensive end hasn't impacted him on the other, on the other end. Right. It doesn't, it doesn't make him like tired where he misses. He, he, all he needs to do is get back, uh, just get that one good look. And next, thing you know, two, three are falling. So, uh, Sam Hauser, I guess should we should we like really take our our medicine here um up with the Matt Ryan stuff and uh, I guess I didn't say Matt Ryan over Sam Hauser. I just right. wanted both. I wanted both guys. Because I knew Matt Ryan was an off the dribble guy and I thought may maybe sometimes you need an off the dribble guy. Yeah. But Sam Hauser is the catch and shoot guy and I knew that he was going to play better off the other guys. But I still wanted to keep Matt Ryan. Yeah. No, I, I'm honestly, I'm going to take very limited medicine here. Cause like, like you, I mean, I, 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 like why limit yourself on shooters is like, is Justin Jackson bringing that much more to your team than Matt Ryan would have like, right. I don't, I don't know, man. So. I, yeah, don't I don't think so. I don't think what, so. What do you like? What's, what do you have Justin Jackson for? He's not doing anything. He's just sitting <laughs> right. there. Yeah. Right. So no, I mean, look, Sam Hauser clearly better than Matt Ryan. Like, and I mean, Sam Hauser, Sam Hauser is putting himself. I mean, he's going to be a rich man after this, uh, very piddling Celtics, uh, uh, kind of, uh, uh, yeah. salary that they have him on for the next three years runs out after that, that like, if he keeps this up, this guy is going to be paid shout out to Duncan Robinson for, uh, for setting the table for him. But, three um, yes, yeah. Tom, three years at Crazy, this little man. three. I mean, that's, just nuts that he's got to go three years this season and two more before he can like get his whatever 14 15 hell by yeah. that time the the with the new salary cap he might be he might be a 15 million dollar a year guy yeah. 
You know, if he keeps this up, absolutely. I don't. Yeah. I mean, look, I mean, it's, seriously, if he keeps this up, it's it's probably going to be more than that because like the, the the sheer value of having a guy like that who, who shoots like that, who, um, you know, just kind of puts teams like, I mean, really just puts some distance between you and another team. Like I, I remember what, okay. So when I was in like eighth, uh, no, when I was, when I was like a sophomore in high school, I ran track. Right. And I had this guy on my team and I was always in relays with him. And he actually ended up like being like a, like, I think almost an Olympian. Like he, like he was, he like ran for Nike. He, he went to Oregon after he, after uh, high school and everything. Um, unbelievably fast guy. And I got so many medals from this guy, just kind of like, <laughs> like, like, you know, I mean, we would have us in sixth place and then here goes Tyler. He's just like, zoom, 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 zoom. And like, you could just kind of see like this, like big space getting created between Tyler and the people behind him. And I feel like, that's kind of what what Hauser does for the Celtics sometimes is he just comes out and he just creates this big space like just just really stretches a lead. So anyway, yeah. I think uh, that the value of that is is really high. That's that's the dangerous part of him and why he's so easy to lose sometimes defensively because and and, and it, it adds another I guess good problem for the Celtics to have where down the stretch. When when do you do you start considering Hauser on 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 stretch right runs because okay if you're if you're you can make you can make a solid argument that if Hauser's on the floor and it's a five point game and teams you've got Tatum just bearing down on teams and Jalen bearing down on teams and they're attacking and and everything collapses. And he and they kick out to Hauser. That's that's a um, that's that's an amazing thing to have out there. All of a sudden, yeah, you like you said, your five point lead can be eleven in a blink, and it's just two shots. Uh, so I don't know. I, the the Sam Hauser experience is something that's that's really interesting. Um, and hey. A good problem to have, just more depth and, uh, you know, exciting, exciting to see. Absolutely. All right. We're going to wrap up the show. Thanks to Tom Westerholm, Tom underscore NBA, Tom uh, underscore the flu. That's terrible, but yeah. Thanks for Tom for, for playing sick. Thanks to you. Hey, if you've got the flu or whatever and you're sick, just kick back, relax. Hope you've enjoyed the show. Uh, if you're just going to work or whatever, hey, Wherever you're going, whatever you're doing, I hope this show was enjoyable for you. If you're not a subscriber, you're still here. I hope this means you're ready to subscribe. For those of you who are subscribers, please share the podcast. Tell your friends and family and everybody that they should be listening to and watching the Lockdown Celtics podcast here on the Lockdown Podcast Network. Your team every day.